Freak the Mighty, Chapter 2, Up from the Down Under That's summer, let's see. I'm still living in the basement, my own private down under, in the little room Grimm built for me there. Glued up this cheap paneling, right? It sort of buckles away from the concrete cellar walls, a regular ripple effect. But I do, do I complain about the crummy paneling or the rug that smells like low tide? I do not, because I like it down under. Got the place all to myself, and no fear of Graham sticking her head in the door and saying, Maxwell, dear, what are you doing? Not that I ever do much of anything. Grim has it fixed in his head I'm at a dangerous age, and they need to keep me under observation. Like I might make bombs or start a fire, or whack out the local pets with my trusty slingshot or whatever. Except I never had a slingshot. It was Grim who had one when he was my age. The proof is right there in the family photo album. You can see this blurry little miniature Grim with no front teeth grinning at the camera and <clears throat> yanking back on this prehistoric slingshot. Good for whacking Macedons, probably. Just proper targets, Grim says, closing up the photo album. End of discussion. Like, oops, better hide the evidence. Don't want to give the dangerous boy any ideas. Not that I have any ideas. My brain is vacant, okay? I'm just this critter hiding out in the basement, drooling in my comic books or whatever. All right, I never actually drool, but you get the picture. Anyhow, this is the first day of July, already counting down for the fourth and wondering where can I get an M80, which is supposed to have the explosive power of a quarter stick of dynamite or something, and when it goes off, your heart thuds to a stop for a microsecond. Wham! Which is probably what Grimm is afraid of. Eek, eek, Maxwell, armed with dynamite. So finally, I get bored in the down under and I'm hanging out in this so called backyard, your basic chunk of chain link heaven. Grimm keeps this crummy little mower in the shed. But what's the point of mowing dirt, right? Okay, I'm out there messing around and that's when I see the moving van. Not your mainstream nationwide brand name mover either. Just some cheapo local outfit. These big bearded dudes in their sweaty undershirts lugging stuff into the duplex half that's been vacant since last Christmas when the dope fiend who lived there finally got busted. At first I'm thinking the dope fiend is back. He's out of jail or whatever and he's moving his stuff back in. Then I see the fair Gwen. Not that I knew her name. That was a little while later. At first she's a glimpse. Carter going to going between the van and the front door, talking to the beards. I'm thinking, hey, I know her. And then I'm thinking, no way, butthead. No way you know a female that beautiful. Because she looks like some kind of movie star. Wearing these old jeans and a baggy t-shirt. And her long hair is tied back. And she's probably sweating. But she still looks like a movie star. Like she has this glow. A secret spotlight that follows her around and makes her eyes light up. And I'm thinking, well, this improves the old neighborhood. You're thinking, yeah, right, the goon is barely out of seventh grade. Who does he think he is? All I'm saying, the fair Gwen had star quality. And even a total moron can see it. And the reason she looked familiar is, I must have seen her bringing freak to daycare way back in the dark ages. Because the next thing I notice is this crippled up yellow haired midget kid strutting around the sidewalk giving orders to the beards. He's going, hey you doofus, yeah you with the hairy face, take it easy with that box. That box contains a computer. You know what a computer is? I can't believe it. By then I'm sneaking along the street to see what's going on and there's this weird looking little dude he's got a normal sized head but the rest of him is shorter than a yardstick and kind of twisted in a way that means he can't stand up straight and makes his chest puff out and he's waving his crutches around and yelling up at the movers hey gwen one of the beards says can't you give this kid a pill or something he's driving us nuts so gwen comes out of the house and pushes the hair out of her big brown eyes and she goes Kevin, go play in the backyard, okay? But my computer, your computer is fine. Leave the men alone. They'll be done soon, and then we can have lunch. 
By this time, I'm hunkering along in front of the place, trying to maintain a casual attitude, except, like I said, my feet are going wild that year. They keep tripping over everything. Cracks in the sidewalk, ants on the sidewalk, shadows, anything. Then the strange little dude jerks himself around and he catches sight of me and he lifts a crutch and points it up at my heart and he goes, identify yourself, earthling. I'm busy keeping my feet from tripping and I don't get it that he means me. I said, identify yourself, earthling, or suffer the consequences. I'm like, what? And before I can decide whether or not to tell him my name or which name, because by now I recognize him as the weird little robot kid from daycare. Maybe he remembers me as Kicker. Anyhow, before I can say a word, he pulls the trigger on that crutch and makes a weapon noise, and he goes, Then die, Earthling, die. I motor out of there without saying a word, because I'm pretty sure he really means it. The way he points that crutch is only part of it. You have to see the look in his eye. Man, that little dude really hates me. He wants me to die. 